G'day, Jess. Uh, how are you doing? I brought the wraps. Uh, Jesse, this is the church wrap. <laughs> <laughs> Hey church, welcome to Online Campus. Uh, we're so glad you could join us on Father's Day. Yeah, yeah. Um, put something in your chat, something you might have got for Father's Day as well. And uh, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there today. <laughs> uh, if you need some prayer as well, make sure you just click on the prayer button and one of our team would love to pray with you as well. So tell us, Jesse, awesome. if we want to come to church, how do we do that? Easy. If you guys want to register, you just get to register online. And then when you get here, come to the door and check in. And then don't forget to sanitize and we can grab you guys in here. Fantastic. Yeah. And uh, Bo, what else is coming up? Very soon we have the online global gathering. It is $20 per screen uh, every night, 7 p.m. from the 1st to the 3rd of October. Fantastic. And what else has been happening, girls? We have two new babies. Baby Olivia Grace born to Crystal and Philip from our Gosford campus. And Matteo Malcolm Satchel born to Johnny and Carl. Have a great service, church, and again, happy Father's happy Day. Father's happy, Father's Father's Day. Day. happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day.
that you are the King of glory. And of your every home that is represented, we just declare that you are good. We just come to worship you this morning. From wherever we are, we come to give you glory, to give you honour. Lord, I thank you that you are with us. That you are with us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence.
where you are, let's sing, you won't let go. Well, good morning, everyone. It's so great to be here with you on Father's Day. And we're so thankful that you took the time to join us online or gathered in a church building somewhere. And um, it's such a privilege to be able to share around communion with you this morning. My name is Pastor Paul McCulloch. And uh, look, if you're a, a dad in your home this morning or in the house this morning, we, we do want to honour you. But we also want to suggest maybe at this time, that you gather the family together and just share communion together and reflect on the thoughts that I'm about to give. But we're so blessed to have you here. I wanna share a story with you this morning about a man who lived in Spain, a father who loved his son very much and there came a disagreement between them and the son left home. The father was so distraught about this that he spent weeks and weeks searching after his son, desperate to try and restore their relationship. He couldn't find him and so in desperation, he decided to put out an ad in the local newspaper. And the ad said something like this. It said, Paco, I love you. All is forgiven. Please meet me at the town square on Saturday at 12 p.m. Well, on that Saturday, the dad nervously went to the town square and to his surprise, there wasn't just one Paco, there was hundreds many, many young men who felt like the relationship with their father had been broken, but now there was an opportunity for that to be restored. This is a great story because it shows us the power of a father's love. It shows us the power of love to be able to forgive, to be able to restore, to be able to let people know that they matter. But it also demonstrates to us that there is inherent risk with love. There can be a cost that comes to loving someone can mean that in a relationship we get hurt, that we feel like we're not valued, that we feel like we've been rejected. That's the risk of love. And you know, as we look at the emblems that we have today, the juice, and in this case, a wafer that represents Jesus' broken body and his shed blood. It's an incredible representative symbol of God's love for us. And you know, I'm, I'm so glad that God valued us so much that He was prepared to risk everything for us, that He was prepared to pay the cost for us, that it didn't cost us anything. He was prepared to do it so that we might be restored in our relationship with Him. I wanna to read to you from the book of Romans. It might be a passage that you're familiar with and in uh, Romans chapter five, Verse six, it says, when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. And then in verse eight, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. God loves us so much that he was prepared to take all the risk. He was prepared to pay the price for yours and my salvation and for our relationship with him, it cost us nothing. And this morning, as we get ready to partake of our emblems this morning, I wonder if we would just take a moment to reflect on his great love for us. But also this, he's also asked us that as he has loved us, we should love others. It's a commandment of Jesus in John. And I wonder this morning, I'm, I'm gonna invite you to partake of this with me. I wonder if you'd invite the Holy Spirit right now to maybe even put upon your heart someone that their relationship with you has been broken. Maybe you've been hurt, maybe they've been hurt. Maybe you're a dad and you need to restore that relationship with a child. Maybe you're a child, you need to restore that relationship with your father. 
Maybe a phone call today, a text message that says, hey dad, I love you. Hey son, hey daughter, I love you. Or maybe to a friend, hey, I love you. Or maybe this morning you're really struggling with areas of hurt because you've been hurt as you've tried to love somebody. Maybe you feel like you've been abandoned by God. As we partake this morning, I just encourage you to invite the Holy Spirit, God's presence into our lives, that we might be people that know how to love regardless of the cost. Why don't we partake together and then I'll pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you this morning for your sacrifice for us. Lord God, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you, God, that you initiated that connection with us, that while we were still sinners, you sent Jesus to die for us. You paid the whole price. We didn't have to pay anything. We just have to receive you. And Lord, I pray for those particularly today who, Lord, have loved and got hurt who have been in a relationship which was so important to them, but now that has been broken or is in disarray. I, I pray you would give us strength to love once again, to reach out, to forgive, and Lord, to invite people into a space where we could, Lord, be in communion with one another once again and be in right relationship, not just with you, but with one another. We thank you, Lord, for the power of what you did in our, in, uh, for our lives, Lord. And today we just invite you into every single relationship that we have for your glory in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for your time this morning. We're going to jump into a great word now from Pastor Mark. God bless you. Well, hello to everyone watching online today. Happy Father's Day. Um, we celebrate this Father's Day here in Australia on this particular Sunday. And it's my honour and privilege to speak a message, a teaching towards this subject today. One of the hardest things for us to do is often is to let go or to give up something which means a lot to us. As parents, we find it hard to let go or to give up our children when they leave home or get married. Uh, we have two girls that, strangely, I don't understand it, but they've left us to go and get married. Fortunately, we still have one of our girls at home. We want to hold on to them, not to let them go from our orbits. But as we listen to the last words of Jesus Christ on the cross, we hear a deep struggle that he had and how he dealt with the struggle. In Luke chapter 23, verse 46, Jesus' last words on the cross that he shouted, he said, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. His example sets before us the way to be able to give up not only our own lives, um, but also everything that is dear to us. These last words that Jesus spoke before his death, we must not just hear them as words from the Son of God, but we must hear them also as Jesus the human, that he had the same struggles that we have. Imagine, put yourself in his place, feel his struggle, and um, be part of the cry and the shout with him. Jesus was committing his very being into the hands of his Father. Jesus could do this because he had confidence in his Father. Without his Father, he could not have bear what was actually happening to him. He took this shout that he said these words, they came from a Jewish prayer that parents prayed over their children. It comes from Psalm verse 31. I entrust my spirit into your hand. The prayer that those parents always prayed goes like this. Lord, as I sleep, I'm not able to watch over myself, so I trust you to watch over me. We also need to be able to say this when it's our time to leave this planet. 
But importantly, we need to be able to say it today while we struggle with the things that life offers us. For our cross comes in different ways. It comes to us in the form of sin or it comes to us in our struggle with different habits or with hatred or self-centeredness or with pride. We try so hard as believers to overcome these things, but sometimes we fail. Our cross comes also to us in the way that other people treat us, in the hardships of life that seem unfair or even unwarranted, or the crushing of our spirit when we are criticised or slandered against. Life is unfair. History promises that to us. We can let this overcome us and be discouraged or we can do what Jesus did. We can bring our pain, we can bring our hurt and commit them into the Father's hands. The Apostle Paul writes in Romans chapter 8, I love this, such an encouraging few verses. He says, I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, neither our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky or above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Because Jesus was able to commit his spirit into his father's hands, he had peace in his earthly dying. I see in too many Christians today a sense of defeat, an overwhelming sense that life is just too much to bear. That see, these people are holding on to their struggles and they let them overtake themselves. All we need to do is to give them over to God. And when we do, not only will we have peace, but we'll also become witnesses to others that our faith is real. While Jesus was on that cross and he cried out that statement, there was a Roman centurion watching him and the way that Jesus handled and acknowledged the Father in his life, he says that surely Jesus was a righteous man. When we're able to live at peace with all things, then we can be different. See, the Father's hands represents divine approval and specifically acceptance of his sacrifice. The Father's hands may also be seen in the ascension of Christ, in the reaching down by the Father and grabbing that of Christ to pull him up into heaven. This phrase, hand of God, was used by an Argentine football player, Maradona to describe a goal he scored in a quarterfinal match between Argentina and England during the 1986 FIFA World Cup. Maradona should have received a yellow card for a clear handball. However, the referees did not have a clear view of the play and the VAR technology did not exist then. So the goal stood. The game ended with a 2-1 win, thanks to a second goal scored by Maradona, known as the goal of the century. After the match, Maradona stated that the goal was scored a little with his head and a little with the hand of God. So let me put it to you this way. Even if you deserve a red card in life, trust in the hand of God. John 20, Thomas put his trust in the resurrected hands of Jesus. He said, I must touch the scars in his hand. I must touch his side. In Exodus chapter 14, a whole nation, the people of Israel, put their trust in Moses' outstretched hand to part the sea. Otherwise, the Egyptian army was going to cut them down. Our hands are powerful. We can either, in many situations, offer a hand out 
to somebody or even better still, we can offer a hand up to someone. In this season of COVID, our best defence against this virus is to simply wash our hands. The greatest risk of you or me catching this virus is fundamentally through our hands. So dads, where are your hands? Future generations will rest on what you do. Most people remember the actions from their dads, offering a hand to help a school project or fixing something or helping read a book or whatever it is, encouraging our kids when they find themselves in a tight or a tough spot. For myself, I'm a man still in his 50s today, there's a part of me that still desires my father's endorsement. I'd love to feel his hand on my shoulder, right beside me. I'd, I just want to feel his presence and support. He passed away 14 years ago this week. Dads, we have a big part in setting our kids free from the bondage of poor self-image or the addiction of seeking other people's approval. Whether that's in the wrong places or the wrong person, the best gift, the best gift, the best gift, dads, that you can give your children, whether you're with them every day or every second weekend or however regularly you have contact with your children, is the best gift you can give your children is an inner strength, a confidence, that's undergirded by humility. And the role that you can play is a safe pair of hands to catch them if they fall. Dads, your hands are powerful. Use them wisely and use them often. Dads, not only use your hands to lift up your children, but lift up the children that are in your world. Encourage them, speak to them, speak blessing over them, speak destiny into their lives. But most importantly, dads, use your hands to lean on Jesus. The Apostle Paul, as I quoted earlier from Romans chapter 8, says, I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from the love of God. Can I tell you that God's love is coming down this screen to you today? That there's people watching and being online in that chat room, that their full desire for you today is that you would have your encounter with Jesus Christ, where you would actually say that prayer that Jesus prayed on the cross that says, I entrust my spirit into your hands, which means that you have to let go of the reins yourself. It means that you have to let go of living for yourself and actually live for Christ, to become a follower of His, a disciple. That beautiful language that talks about being an apprentice of Jesus Christ, where He is the master and you are the apprentice. On the line, in that chat space, down here on the side of the screen, can I encourage you that you would acknowledge that you'd want to pray that prayer that says, I entrust my spirit to the Father. I'm talking about becoming a Christian. Whether that's for the first time, maybe you've prayed this prayer before, maybe that was years ago, a long distant prayer, but it seems that everything's gotten cold again. Can I encourage you that you would enunciate yourself and saying, I want to pray that prayer. I'd love it if you could click on that button inside the chat room there. We've got a team of people that will help walk you through that prayer. Let me pray for you right now. Father, we entrust this moment to you, where by the power of your Holy Spirit, you're speaking to people's hearts. Dads, mums, daughters, sons, no matter who's watching this morning, that they're, 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 there's this energy, there's this uh, moment inside of them that they're saying, I've got to do something. Well, I pray that by God's divine power that He comes right into your room, right through that screen, wherever you are right now, and He will minister to you. It's happened over and over again before. So we pray in Jesus' name, 
by the power of the Holy Spirit that lives are transformed. As you make that decision to follow Jesus Christ, that He will be your encouragement, your pair of safe hands to pick you up no matter what you've done, where you've been, and speak directly to you so that He can call you my son, my daughter. Bless your church. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Mark, for a great word. Hi, I'm Pastor Dan. I'm here from the Chumhaven campus. As you can see, I'm outdoors here and it's my chance to say to you today, Happy Father's Day. Dads, make sure you get outside. Kids, take that outside. It's a great time uh, to be outdoors with him. I just want to share around our giving today. Obviously, online, if uh, you want to give, you can click down in the chat. There's the link there. Also via our app, which then takes a link through to our website and you can give online there as well. I just want to share a few moments uh, about worry today. So let's go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 to 27. It says, this is Jesus talking. That is why I tell you, do not worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds, fitting for today. Don't they plant, they don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for your heavenly father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Then I love what Jesus says, the great rhetorical question. He says in verse 27, can all your worries add another day to your life? Well, the short answer to that question is no. It's actually quite the opposite. It actually worry detracts from your life. It actually kills you. It shortens your life. If you were to look into the research about the effects of worry, stress and anxiety, these three uh, have on the human body, it's quite concerning. When we worry, harmful chemicals are released into our body stream, into our bloodstream, and they have a negative effect on nearly every part of your body, on your heart, on your lungs, on your stomach, uh, in every area here, it affects our weight, dads, Worry affects our weight, uh, the nervous system, the immune system, and the blood system, just to name a few. Whoa, that's crazy. So also research has linked a lot of our worry and concern right across the world to the number one stress of, and worry about is money. Isn't that interesting? And no wonder then Jesus in his most famous preach speaks to this very issue about worry, about money, about the things that we need. Look, he also then gives us the actual answer about how do we combat this worry? How do we combat all the things that we need in life? Well, first of all, he goes to verse 33 in the same chapter and says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be sorted out for you. Isn't that incredible? Let me put it simply for this, run to God first. Turn your worries into prayers. Give him your first thoughts and give him the first option to make a way for you. Hey, we do that in so many different ways, in the way that we pray, the way that we lead our lives, giving Him our very, very best in our finances, in our giving, in our relationships. So this morning, can I encourage you, do not worry, but turn your worries into prayers and let God do great things for you. Can, we, can I pray? Father, I just thank You that You are our source for everything. And I thank You that You see every need before we even know it. So we today put our trust in You again. We give you everything that our, we turn our worries into prayers that we'd see you do miracles today. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Be blessed. Hey, just before I go, uh, we've got a funny little video from our kids team. Uh, have a happy Father's Day and then we're on to the blessing.
Hey everybody, we're going to say the blessing together. Would you stand with us? Do whatever you got to do. Lay down, stand up, whatever. But uh, happy Father's Day to me. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Thanks. <laughs> mate. Is we that what you wanted? Yeah. Happy Father's perfect. Day. We love you lots. Perfect. We love you. Hope you see dads. We do love you lots. Yep. Cool. Let's say the blessing together. Awesome. Romans 15, 13. Here we go. I pray that God, who is the source of hope, would fill us completely with joy and peace because we place our trust in Him. Then we would overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
for joining us today. If you opened your heart to accept Jesus into your life and you responded to that hand raised, one of our team will be in contact with you. This is the most powerful decision you could ever make and we want to celebrate this with you as you take your first steps forward into the amazing future God has planned for you. We will see you next time and until then, know that you are truly loved and valued. See you soon.